welcome to our room. We've got a closet there, a random mannequin, a TV. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. It's out of focus. There we go. And then this is our bed. This is incredibly cozy. Over here is one of the nightstands. And this very schnazzy bathroom. There's me. Oh my god, this shower is very nice. <laughs> Look at that shower, Ian. They have I a waterfall. Already, already looked. Let me go. Very nice. And then this is the toilet, because you were dying to know what that looked like. Yeah, this is very cool. I'm very excited to stay here. We essentially just checked into our hotel and uh, went out for dinner. Uh, the receptionist at our hotel recommended Quan Moor, um, which was a seafood restaurant in Oban, and we actually loved that restaurant so much. Um, it was just super cozy inside. They had like, you know, stone and wood, and it just was a very warm atmosphere. And um, we kind of ended up eating there almost every day when we were uh, in Oban. Uh, I think like the last day of the trip, we were like, do we, where do we want to go out to eat? And we're like, do we do Quan War? And we're like, no, we can't. Like we've been there like almost every, like they started recognizing us when we came in. They're like, you're back. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was really good. And the food was incredible. Um, so if I go back to Oban anytime soon, which I'm hoping I get to go back, um, Definitely want to go back to one more. Highly recommend it. Um, maybe try not to eat there every day if you can, but I do think it's maybe the best restaurant um, in Oban, in my humble opinion. Our fifth day in Scotland, we started off by having breakfast at our hotel, and it was just an incredible experience. The dining area uh, of the hotel was super cute kind of weird like there were paintings of like borderline naked women <laughs> everywhere um but it was still just really really cool and you can watch um the oceans and in oban there are a lot of um ferries that are going back and forth so we got to watch the ferries going and like there was like fog on the ocean and like just combination of like the fog and the waves and the fairies and then the sunrise it's just like really beautiful and a nice way to start our day honestly sometimes I wish I could just like live on the ocean somewhere like that and just like start every day with a cup of coffee looking out my window it just sounds so nice um but I'm sure it's one of those things that you just get used to after you see it every single day our breakfast was absolutely incredible uh, we ordered their traditional Scottish breakfast, which came with, uh, I think, black pudding. Uh, we had never tried black pudding before, and I, again, like Haggis, did not want to try black pudding. Uh, but Ian was like, you have to try it. We're in Scotland. When you travel, you have to try new things. Um, so I, I stepped out of my comfort zone, and I tried the black pudding, and I... Um, honestly, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but it's not something I think I would order again. Um, it was just kind of, kind of almost looked like a really dry, thin hamburger patty. Like, it was like a black hamburger patty, it looked like. And it just kind of tasted dry to me. I just, I don't know. Haggis? Really tasty. Black pudding? I think there's better tasting food out there than black pudding. It's my own opinion. Um, but I was also blown away by before getting the traditional Scottish breakfast. Um, I, they gave me, um, a whiskey oatmeal and oh my goodness, like when they put it in front of me, I could smell like, it smelled like whiskey. 
And when I asked the, um, the server there, you know, if whiskey was literally put into the oatmeal, he said, yeah, like, you know, they just add a splash. It's a very like light splash of whiskey. Um, and it's something that I guess is done in Scotland. I've never heard of anyone putting whiskey in their oatmeal before. I may have thought if you told me in the past, like, oh yeah, I put whiskey in my oatmeal, I'd probably be like, oh, you like to start drinking early, huh? Um, but it was so, so good. And it's actually something that I've brought back with me from Scotland. I absolutely adore putting just like the tiniest of splashes of whiskey into my oatmeal now. Highly recommend trying it. It smells incredible. It tastes incredible. When you pair it with like brown sugar, I don't know why, but like the flavor is just so much more rich. I mean, you cook with alcohol, right? Like I think there's a reason we cook with alcohol. It really enhances flavors. Um, so I would highly recommend try, trying out adding a splash of whiskey to your oatmeal. Um, you know, just be careful that you're not like dumping the whole bottle because I think <laughs> that defeats the point of it. Um, just like a little splash uh, is very, very good. So I was very impressed and I will be doing that for the rest of my life because it really elevates oatmeal. After breakfast, we went back to our room, finished getting ready and headed out to Donnelly Castle. cool this is so cool we got to go up to the castle 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 <laughs> and it's still a castle it's still a castle i honestly thought it would be uh maybe not a pile of rocks but pretty pretty close to a pile of rocks it was more it was standing way, than i thought way more than a pile of rocks <laughs> uh really really cool and we were told that they're actually going to be excavating more of the castle this upcoming season so next year it's going to look even different from it look looking this year or what it looked like this year um yeah really really cool and the views were insane like you could see all of oban i think isla mole uh is like across from where we were at now, so that was really cool to see. Really cool history. Mm -hmm. What's one piece that stuck out to you? Mm -hmm. Not the handrails? All the McDougal, McDougal women were hardy and strong, just like you. Yeah, Mary Mc, McDougal, MacDougal, uh, was left with three kids, uh, and she was pregnant. And she was 19 to essentially defend this area uh, by herself. Well, there were 12, 12 guardsmen, 13 I guess. 13 men. 13 men. That's pretty badass. Yeah. I don't know how she did it. She had walls. Yeah, she had walls <laughs> and some people helping. But yeah, yeah. it was uh, really, really cool. So we're definitely going to have to come back and do this again. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. I only got one. For our sixth day in Scotland, we headed to Glencoe for some hiking. Originally, uh, we planned on visiting the Isle of Skye to go hiking. And like, if you've seen any like YouTube videos about Scotland, the Isle of Skye is usually covered in those videos because it's just a gorgeous location. If you go to Scotland, I just feel like you have to go to Isle of Skye. Um, they have just beautiful cliffs and the mountains are just like super like jagged and like 
just different from what you will see in most areas of the world. It just looks breathtaking. Well, we planned on going there, but with our whole electric car adventure, we were nervous that we would run out of electricity for the car if we drove all that far. I think it was like a four hour drive there and maybe a four hour drive back, which is quite a bit on an electric car that you're not sure um, you'll be able to charge uh, quickly. A lot of the chargers uh, at the Isle of Skye were, um, they didn't have many high speed chargers. So we were kind of risking other cars using the high speed chargers. Um, and then we were also risking not being able to get it to charge because we did have to, while in Oban, ask a hotel in Oban to lend us their charge card that they had there to charge the car. So if you're kind of in the middle of nowhere and there's not a hotel or not someone that's, you know, running those chargers, you kind of run the risk of not um, being able to easily charge your, your car. Um, so we just didn't, we didn't really want to drive eight hours and get stranded. Um, so we ended up not going to Alice Sky and still kind of bummed about it. Like I was probably most excited second to going to Dunolly Castle, uh, to see the Isle of Sky, but I guess I'll just have to go back to Scotland one day. Um, so instead we went to Glencoe, uh, just because it was closer to Oban and we wouldn't have to worry about the car running out of charge. Um, and the hike there was extremely beautiful, um, very, uh, I would say it was like moderate to easy in uh, difficulty. having fun yeah. right now <laughs> right now we're hiking through a, a forest we didn't check which forest we're hiking the in. forest it's the forest it's the forest the forest in Glencoe it's been really cool we just uh, took the drone up and I didn't crash so I'd <laughs> consider that a success yeah we're having fun hike we headed back to Oban to freshen up and we decided to go out to one of the nicest restaurants in Oban. I might be butchering the pronunciation of the restaurant. I think it was pronounced Usk. Uh, Usk? Usk? Uh, you spell it like this. E-E-U-S-K. Um, and it was, honestly, I think I like Quan more, more. Um, Usk was very, very nice and again had um, ocean views, although we were, since we didn't make a reservation far enough in advance, we were kind of like against the back wall. So we didn't really, we could like kind of see the ocean, but like not, not really. I think if you go there, try to like make a reservation ahead of time so you can get a nicer view. Um, but the food was way more expensive. Um, it was kind of like what we, it was like our night to kind of splurge, um, as if the whole trip wasn't a splurge, but like 
yeah, we, we wanted to try out this nice restaurant and we ended up ordering um, oysters, which were huge, but they were very, very tasty. Um, Ian ordered battered monkfish and I ended up ordering like their fish plate, which was a combination of sea bass and a fish of the day, which honestly, I don't even know what it was. I, I think they mentioned it and I forgot what it was. It was good. And then, I don't know if you pronounce it, hak, hake, hak? It's a type of fish. That was another fish that was in it. Overall, the dinner was really good, um, but I think for the price to quality, um, maybe not even price to quality, price to taste, uh, I actually really, really liked Kwan more, way more. Um, so if you go visit Oban, uh, maybe check it out, try to get a good seat and a nice view. Um, but I'm not sure you need to spend all that money for uh, that restaurant. I also could have just ordered maybe the wrong thing, so there's that too. But we did end up ordering their sticky toffee pudding, which if you go to Scotland, you have to try sticky toffee pudding. It was just something that Ian read about on the internet and how you just have to try it. And we are on that bandwagon. You have to try it. It was incredible. I think Ian and I were like fighting over the last bites because we um, ended up splitting the sticky toffee pudding. Um, it was really, really good. So I highly recommend ordering that. So our final day in Scotland, uh, we actually started off the morning with um, you know, another breakfast and went out to um, the Dunolly Castle to try to uh, get drone footage. Um, I really, really wanted a uh, shot of the castle, so we did that. It started raining. It actually started raining while I was putting our drone up in the sky. Like, it wasn't raining, put the drone up, started raining, and um, my drone isn't like, the drone I have is not meant to be in the rain. It's not waterproof. So I quickly brought that back down, went back to the hotel um, to put on like rain clothing, like raincoats, boots, whatever. And it stopped raining again. So we quickly ran back to the castle to try to get uh, drone footage and we did and it turned out really cool. Um, so after that, we headed out to Dunstagnif, uh, I believe it's pronounced, castle. Um, Dunstagnif, yeah. Really hard to pronounce some of these words. Um, but essentially it's a castle. And <laughs> we drove out there, took a look at it. We were only able to stay for like 20 minutes because we had a distillery tour at 11.40 a.m. Um, so we needed to like, went saw that castle, went, okay, we gotta get back. Uh, and we drove back to Oban, parked the car, went to the distillery tour, and just like started our day drinking early. Um, and yeah. Hey, where are we? Uh, the Oban distillery. What did you think of the tour we just went on? It was really cool. Yeah? Yeah, very informative. I didn't know. You know, it's nice to learn things about the things you love. Yeah. <laughs> Whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> we also learned about how to kind of become a whiskey taste master. Mm. You just drink a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm practicing right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so from the whiskeys you've tried, which one are you enjoying the most so far? I've only tried one. All right, which one did you try? The Oban. Distillers edition. Is that what we had when we first came in? Yep. Okay. I didn't realize. Yeah, and you like that one? It is good. Mm -hmm. yeah. When I get drunk professionally. When I get drunk, it's problematic, and Ian, it's only a Tuesday morning, and once again, if you do this once more, you'll have to be let go. <laughs> oh my god. These guys do it, they get paid for it. Not fair. There you go, you're in the wrong profession. Yeah. You know? 
What was your favorite part of the tour? Mm. And don't say drinking the whiskey. I was about to. It's just like seeing the whole process was pretty cool. What part of the process was cool for you? Um, Cool. It was just like seeing the big tanks was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Seeing the like hundred tons of, you know, barley being fermented and stuff was pretty cool. Happy Ian. Hurry up and take it. It's already on Ian. (laughs) Oh, I'm in my happy place. Time is it? Twelve forty-seven. Twelve. It's it's new. It's afternoon. Yeah. It's twelve o'clock it's, somewhere. It's perfectly acceptable whiskey drinking time. Is what you're telling me. It's very good. I've decided I want to become a master whiskey taster as a profession. <laughs> you like how I was asking about that? Mm-hmm. I don't know if I have the sense of smell required, but yeah, I will find a way. You have the, the love for yes. whiskey. <laughs> I have the passion. For drinking whiskey. Yeah, specifically for drinking. Yeah. This is the Talisker, if I'm pronouncing that right, Distillers edition, and if you can see on this handy dandy note we have here in my very chip nail polish, um, it is more smoky, which is why I ordered it, and very rich. So this is the perfect whiskey for Brittany. So I would say my favorite part of the tour was learning about the barrels that they have and how it affects the flavor. Yeah, because essentially when you're distilling whiskey, it's really distilling a spirit and then it becomes whiskey once it has essentially been sitting in an oak wood barrel and is absorbed that wood. That comes from the States? Yeah. And Interesting. quite a few of the barrels come from the American, or they're American oaks, they come from the U.S., um, which was interesting because at first I didn't want to drink whiskeys that had that because I was like, ooh, I don't want American whiskey, I'm in Scotland. Um, but it's essentially because the bourbon uh, distilleries uh, can only use the barrels once and then they have to get rid of them. So they ship them off here and they're reused, so it's actually more sustainable. And we got a lot of trees. And we have a lot of trees in the U.S. Yeah. All right. Uh, we are back at the hotel. I wanted to kind of like give a rundown of the, our day today in the distillery uh, that we went to this afternoon. Uh, essentially, we started our tour. It was pretty early. We started at 11.30 a.m., um, which if you think about it, it's pretty early to just start drinking whiskey, but we're on vacation, so it's definitely not five o'clock in the U.S., but it's five o'clock somewhere, as we like to say. Um, came to the distillery, sat down, got to try some whiskey, um, before the, the tour, went on the tour, had an incredible tour guide, um, Learned quite a bit. I think the things that really stuck with me, I mean, I don't remember all the measurements he gave or the temperature in which the whiskey um, was essentially, well, the spirits, what they were distilled at. Um, So I'm going to skip all the nitty gritty details because I um, honestly forgot most of it. But I'm grabbing my handy dandy notes that I did take. I think things that seemed interesting to me were, um, what I really, really liked learning about the different barrels and how the wood actually really impacts the flavor of whiskey. Um, I guess I didn't really realize that you first make the spirit or like the alcohol of the whiskey 
and then you actually then go and a lot of that flavor that you taste in whiskey is actually coming from the barrel that it um, aged in. So I didn't realize that until the tour. Uh, maybe this is common knowledge, but it was not common knowledge to me. Um, because of that, essentially, we learned about the the barrels. Uh, many whiskeys, at least in Scotland, use um, American oak barrels, which, to be honest, at first I was a little bit put off by it. Uh, maybe not during the tour, but yesterday we went to a pub and we wanted to try out different whiskeys from the area, and I did see a whiskey that um, said like on the front like aged in American oak barrels and I'm like I'm in Scotland people I don't want American aged whiskey but it's actually pretty common and it's actually not a bad thing um, so with all the distilleries in the area uh, they've kind of taken to getting the American oak because the US one has a lot of trees and two um, we learned on the tour that, you know, bourbon, uh, distilleries in the U.S., uh, part of, you know, making bourbon and having something actually be officially called bourbon is you have to make your bourbon with a new oak barrel, and then once that barrel has been used, you can't reuse it. It's, it's done. You can reuse it, but you can't call what you make bourbon. So those barrels, essentially there's like thousands and thousands and thousands of barrels that we could just kind of throw away. But what, um, you know, the distilleries in Scotland have done is they said, well, hmm, what a great idea. Why don't we use your barrels? Because to us, whiskey doesn't have to be made with a fresh new barrel. We will just take that and, um, you know, reuse what you have. So. A lot of uh, barrels out here are made from the American oak barrels and then um, on top of that we learned about the flavor of you know the whiskeys and how the wood impacts that so um, essentially by leaving your whiskey in a barrel for a long time uh, that gives it more flavor because more of the uh, I don't know if you call it residue in the wood kind of seeps into the spirits, giving it more of, you know, the wood flavors there. Um, so that's why, like, sometimes you see barrel, um, whiskeys that say it's been aged for 14 years. The 14 years are just giving the spirit time to absorb some of the elements and flavors from the wood barrel. So that's kind of, like, basic, like, the wood is really what you are tasting. The color of whiskey, that brown kind of honey looking color, that actually is coming from the barrel as well. Um, so that was interesting to me, I had no idea. Um, and then if you keep reusing them, it's like there's less of that nice wood flavor that kind of comes in. So one way to combat that is the distilleries here in Scotland have started to either like shave some of the uh, wood that's used in these barrels to kind of release more of the fresh wood that has still maybe that flavor that's left. Um, or they actually go and they, um, I don't know if charring it is the proper term, but they'll kind of char it and burn it and that even gives a different kind of taste um, as well. So that was really, really cool. I enjoyed learning about it. Um, the whiskey we tried was pretty good. Uh, the distillery that we were at, Oban Distillery, um, or apologies, Oban Distillery, um, is very, very small. Essentially, they built their distillery and the city of Oban kind of developed around it, so they don't really have much room to expand. Um, so it's a very, very small uh, distillery in comparison to the other Scottish uh, whiskey distil distilleries in the area. Um, yeah, I mean, otherwise, I, I thought it was a really cool, uh, tour we went on. Another interesting fact is some of the whiskey that is made here, uh, is made with kind of the American or U.S., um, flavor profile in mind, so... Um, I think the tour guide mentioned that two-thirds of their whiskeys 
are actually exported to the U.S. Um, so they keep that in mind with uh, essentially, you know, as a business, you got to think of who your target uh, customers are. And that's something that they've kept in mind um, as they've released some of their whiskeys. Uh, specifically, I believe it was called Little Bay. Let me double check that. Yeah, their Little Bay whiskey um, was specifically made for the uh, American palate so that they could sell it uh, in the U.S. and have it be um, purchased frequently. And after that, we went over to Oven's uh, Chocolate House, Chocolate Shop. I think it's Chocolate Shop. And Ian had the sticky toffee uh, bread and I had a hot chocolate that was absolutely glorious. Had whipped cream and oh, it was really, really good. Yeah, so far it's been a good day. Ian's passed out in bed. No, not. <laughs> Ian is awake. I've been awake the whole time. Awake. <laughs> Um, and we're just taking it easy because tomorrow we have to wake up at 3 a.m. to drive to the airport, to go back home. So we're trying to just take it easy so that we can go to bed early tonight instead of being wound up. And I've been too excited to go to sleep early, so I'm trying to be calm. One way I've done that is through knitting. I found a local, uh fabric store here that had yarn um, from uh, I believe was it Orkney I believe um, and so yeah it looks really cool I don't think you can see it on here uh, is this how people get things yeah there we go so yeah very very cool um, it's been very relaxing I haven't knitted since uh, I think I did in high school it's been a while, but it was actually really easy to pick up again. I thought that it would take me a while to relearn, but I guess knitting is one of those things that you just need to watch a quick video and you can go on and do whatever. So I've been knitting and watching YouTube videos, uh, mainly just Cecilia's videos because I love her stuff. It's just so relaxing and honestly, like, just makes me want to travel even though I am already traveling. Uh, so yeah, I think now I'm probably going to head out. Um, there's McKegg's Tower. I'm butchering everything I say out here, uh, which was built, I believe, 100 or 200 years ago. I'll get the details on that soon. But I want to go take the drone, get some final open shots. Um, yeah, just, it's been a great trip. We're having a lot of fun. I think that's it. Bye bye. I'm walking back to our hotel right now and I am so happy I did this. Um, Ian was really tired and wants to get ready for uh, our long day of travel tomorrow but I just I couldn't miss golden hour on like overlooking Oban or Oban so I'm really happy that I did this. And yeah, I got some weird looks because I used my drone, but I think I got really cool shots. So I'm really excited. I was also recording myself while someone was waiting for me to stop walking on the street. So that was embarrassing. Oops. So pretty. I'm like videotaping myself shamelessly in public because it's just... Just look at that. Anyway, my nose is running. It's been running all week. At least the wind isn't bad. I've had my hair in a ponytail all week because every time I wore it down, it just would like fly all over the place. Um, yeah, it's been a really good trip. I'm actually really, really bummed that we're headed home, but I'm really excited to see our dogs because I miss them so much. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna miss Scotland. We had a great time here.